हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सी द इंट्रोडक्शन टू द एलईडी और द लाइट एमिटिंग डायोड सो दिस वीडियो इज रियली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द यूनिट थ्री वे आर वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द ऑप्टिकल सोर्सेज आई होप यू ऑल हैव सीन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वेर आई गेव यू एन इंट्रोडक्शन टू द ऑप्टिकल सोर्सेज टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द बेसिक्स ऑफ द एल that is its working operation in brief we are going to talk about the working principle of the led but in the next video we will be talking in detail about the working principle with the help of energy band diagram so watching the next video becomes really essential if you want to know led in detail so today first of all we are going to see in brief what is the working principle then we are going to see the characteristics of the led the advantages of the led disadvantages of the led the material used for manufacturing the led so we are going to cover a lot of topics and this is the reason this video becomes really important for our exam point of view and i hope you all are watching this video very carefully so let's start our topic of the day that is led so the full form of the led as i have already told you it is light emitting diode because it is emitting the light it can be used as an optical source i know only the materials which can emit light are called the optical sources so i can say led is an optical source right so i can say led is in diode as well so what is the functioning of the diode diode we all know from our previous classes at least i know basic structure of the diode diode is fabricated on the semiconductors now semiconductors have the conductivity in between the metals and the insulators with the help of energy band diagram also i will be showing you the properties of the semiconductor so now semiconductors are used to make the leds and here i have a p junction as well as an n junction right so both p and n junction when they are combined it is making a diode we all know this thing so this is my diode okay so now here in the p junction i will be having the axis of the holes right and in the n junction i will be ha having axis of the electrons so now here these electrons will go and they will be going here this is my interface of the p and n junction right so here electrons will go and combine with the hole so a positive and negative charge is combining and i can say recombination is taking place so now recombination will be taking place in this region only which is marked by this red so now here this recombination will be creating some energy which is released in the form of light so whenever recombination will be taking place the electrons from the higher energy state will be coming down to the lower energy state and this is the reason i have the light which is emitted not i can say the light is emitted i can say the energy is emitted the energy can be emitted in the form of heat or in the form of light in the next video i'm going to talk in detail about it right so here we are considering all of the energy is emitted in the form of light and this is the working principle of the led so here i hope you understood how this structure is operating to release the light right so the energy is released in the visible or the infrared region okay so i can say a forward bias p n junction exhibit spontaneous emission of the radiation as soon as i apply the current as soon as the emission will be starting taking place right so when the emission is taking place it will be in the visible or the ir region okay i hope you understood it and now the principle the working principle light is generated when the electrons in the conduction band are injected by the valence band and recombination take place so 
in the next video i will be talking in detail about the energy band diagram so you can understand that the conduction band is sending the electrons to the valence band and now here this is the high energy state this is the low energy state so now when the electrons comes from a higher energy state to a lower energy state it is going to release the energy because i know the principle energy can never be created it can never be destroyed so when energy is decreasing some of the energy is released this energy which is released is in the form of light so this in this way i can say leds are emitting the light right i hope you understood this the mechanism by which light emitted by the led now led is acting as an optical source if i want to increase the light emitted by it i can use two things first is the optical cavity i can make the optical cavity or i can use the mirror facets so the optical cavity and the mirror facets are increasing the emission of the light so when i have used these two there would be a phenomena which is occurring which is the laser injection due to the feedback of the photons the feedbacks are going to increase the emission of the light so in this manner i can say my led will be starting behaving like a laser Okay so I am going to talk about it in also detail in the upcoming video so as of now you must understand we have some complex methods the optical cavity and the mirror facets by which I can increase the light energy from the led and why I want to increase the light energy because the leds are not a very good optical source it is a non coherent optical source which means it is sending the light in the various frequencies right so now the current density of the operation of the leds are also very less which i want to increase and for that i can use the optical cavity and the mirror facets right so in this unit we are going to deal about the led and the laser in detail so i hope you understood the basics of the led now coming to the characteristics of the led as i told you in the previous discussion also the current density of operation is very low as compared to the lasers which i want to increase i don't want a very low current density right so the this is the first property of the led okay so it is giving me the incoherent light so i can say it is an incoherent light source okay so it is working on the various frequencies various range of frequencies energy emitted is roughly equal to the band gap energy and in the next video i am going to show you in detail that how the energy which is emitted is related to the band gap energy actually it is directly equal to the band gap energy now here you can see we have some gap of energy when the electrons are coming to the lower energy band it will be releasing the energy now this released energy can be in the form of light can be in the form of heat so i can say that this energy this difference in the energy is directly proportional to the energy which is released but the energy which is released can be the light energy or it can be the heat energy right so now the line width of the led corresponding to the photon energy is between 1 to 3.5 kt where k is the boltzmann constant t is the temperature so now from this uh, equation i can find out the wavelength on which leds are operating leds are going to give light only in the particular wavelength that is 30 to 40 nanometer okay when i am using the gallium arsenide as the led at room temperature okay so with the help of material also i can change the frequency i can get yellow light red light blue light different colors of light from the led even i can get infrared light also from the led but it depends upon the type of material that i have used the temperature and also the structure of the led i am going to talk in detail about the structure of the led as well in the upcoming video so it is going to support the many optical modes and this is the reason it is going to used as a multi mode source okay so i know somewhere multi mode sources are going to cause the problems so these are all the characteristics of the led 
and I hope you understood the characteristics really well. Okay, so now coming to the advantages. First of all, it is having very simple fabrication. I told you we have a P type of region, we have N type of region which are coming and which are directly joined together. Okay, so now it is a very simple uh, fabrication that the LED is having and it is not having any complex steps. When I want to make lasers, I will be having the mirror facets. So which are complex to make and this is the reason I want to work with LED. The cost will increase if I use the laser. LEDs are very cheap as compared to the laser. It is cost effective. So this is a very big advantage. If I want to work on the system which is not very costly, then I can opt for LED. If I don't have any cost issues, I can go for the laser. So it is reliable. It is not affected by the environmental conditions. It is not affected by the catastrophic degradation as well. So it can be used for a very long duration of time without getting degraded. So this is also a very good reason we can switch towards the LED. Now it is having less temperature dependence and it is having high threshold. So when it is not depending upon the temperature, even if the temperature is changing in the surrounding, it is not affected. So this is also a very big advantage because in the practical communications, I cannot control the temperature. So here the LED will become advantageous. Now it is having simplicity to drive it because it is operational on the low current density. It is requiring low power to drive it. So this is also a very good advantage of using the LEDs. It is having the linear characteristics. The input output characteristics are nearly linear which are very beneficial when I talk about the functionality of the LED. So I hope you understood all of the advantages of the LED in detail. So now coming to the disadvantages. So it is having the low optical power is coupled inside the fiber. Now what happens? So if I have the LEDs, its spectral bandwidth is very high as compared to the lasers. So its radiations are spread on a wider spectral bandwidth and this is the reason it is very difficult almost impossible to concentrate all of the lights emitting from the LED inside the optical fiber. So this is a very big disadvantage. We have various harmonic distortions as well when I am talking about the LEDs. Again harmonic distortions are going to cause the losses and this is the reason LEDs are not preferred. We will be having the low modulation bandwidth. Again this is also a very big disadvantage to us. So now coming to discuss about the various materials. So these are the various materials that are used for the formation of the LEDs. I cannot use the simple semiconductors like the silicon or the germanium. I will be talking about the reason in the next video. Also I will be talking about the materials used in the next video in a great detail. So first material that I can use the gallium arsenide or the gallium arsenide which is having the aluminium as well. So it can be called as aluminium gallium arsenide. So it is operational on a shorter wavelength region only. When I talk about the indium gallium arsenide or the indium phosphide, it is operational on a wider or longer wavelength which is around 1.3 micrometer. Now if I have the indium gallium arsenide phosphide, here it operates on the longer wavelength region, it is operating faster, it is having higher speed if I talk about the single mode usage. It can be used in the multi mode usage as well, but here its operational speed will be decreased. So I hope you got an overview about the materials that are used and what are the properties of the different materials. In the next video, we are going to see why I cannot use the germanium or the silicon. I have to use the indirect semiconductors. These are the indirect semiconductors that I have. These are not the direct semiconductors. Plus how the emitted light and its wavelength are dependent upon the type of dopants, the quantity of the dopants that I have used. 
So all of these things are really important from our exam point of view and I hope you will be meeting me soon in the next video. I hope you like this session. If you like it, please push the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. And if you have any doubt related to this content, you can put the doubt in the comments and please give me your valuable feedback as well. Thank you so much.